Stone Pony, July 31st. Tickets go on sale Friday. Um, you're like amongst the first shows we get to announce. And it's special because of how you appreciate the relationship between you and the audience. And having heard you say that, and having been in the audience and being one of those people singing and clapping uh, along, man, I, I just got to ask, when you see your itinerary and you see Stone Pony, Asbury Park, do you, do you have a reaction to that? Um, I do. Stone Pony, you know, we have so many near and dear friends that live out your way. You know, the Bouncing Souls, um, mutual friends um, that that I've known for probably 30 years, you know, the Bouncing Souls. And then our, our friends, my, my friend Lou, who sings and Sick of It All. And we always rope him into coming on stage with us and singing a song with us. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, Brian Baker from Bad Religion is in your neck of the woods. Um, and so I love, I love playing there just because it's like a family reunion. A lot of our Warped Tour buddies, you know, live out that way. So, and you know, you're across the street from the ocean. You get to see it from on stage, the sun oh, setting yeah. behind you for the crowd. It's like, yeah. I mean, how can I forget to mention that? That's like one of my favorite things ever. One, it's like, especially when you, when you wake up and you're in Asbury Park, it's, it's like this feeling of like calm relief like okay i'm here it's you know it's different than when you're waking up in the middle of some urban area you know the heart heart of a city where like they're like, like it's cool but like you know it's loud it's dirty you just want to like chill out when you first wake up so um you know it, it's it's definitely i mean you can't be playing on the beach you know yeah yeah i hear you and the you know what you bring uh as a punk band the way you do it with such a intelligence it brings a fan base that creates a real uh, connection with each other, not just yeah. between you and the crowd. Do you get to notice that? Yeah, I think, I feel like I noticed the same effect that we have on our audience that bands like Bad Religion and like punk bands like Seven Seconds had on me as a, as a audience participant, you know, growing up. It's it's definitely like a, a different level of connection. It's one thing to go and you're hanging out and partying or whatever, and and you're just hanging out with your buddies, but it's another thing to have this this um, like a wavelength thing. Like you're on the same wavelength, and you you could tell you're making a real effect with with kids singing along to lyrics and and making. I guess what I'm trying to say is having an effect on somebody who's young in school, you know, trying to figure out life. And if we can kind of help them through difficult times like that, then that's, then we're doing our job. And that's what bad religion did for me, you know, in punk bands in general, it, cause you don't, you're lost you know, when you're growing up, you're yeah. trying to figure out a direction. Um, but I like to feel like we have a platform a, where it's like a privilege to be at the level that we're at, you know, like, I don't even know, I still pinch myself every day that, that you know, we've achieved this level of, of success and it just doesn't seem real still after 20 years of being a band. So we might as well use that platform for some good. You know, it's, I don't knock bands for having, you know, like just singing about partying or, or whatever, but, but I, I feel like we should do some good with, uh, you know, our, our level of, of success. So, um, I, th I feel like uh, it's resonating with people, you know, if that makes any sense. Like you could, you could just tell.